How Aokiji joined the Blackbeard Pirates? Is he an ally or part of them? Who won the fight between Law's crew and Blackbeards? All those mysteries are solved in this new chapter. Hello guys and welcome to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. We are here to talk about the latest chapter of One Piece, 1081. A really incredible chapter which was again showing us what's going on around the world while we are in the same arc. Anyways, in this video, we'll talk about Law's defeat, the way Aokiji joined the Blackbeard Pirates, and most importantly, of course, his fight against the legendary hero of the Marine, Monkey D. Garp. Let's start by analyzing the color spread of this chapter, 1081. What's really interesting here is the book Sanji is reading. Instead of cooking, it says cocking. I'm sorry. But yeah, that's what it says. Cocking. Here the author is playing with the word cooking, foreshadowing Sanji's future conqueror's haki because separating the words into two parts give you cock, which represents conquerors, and king, you know king, translates to haoshoku. And yeah, the name of the haki in Japanese is haoshoku haki. Conqueror's Haki. So expect Sanji to awaken his Conqueror's Haki in his future fights. Anyways, this chapter is continuing where he left off with Garp and the swords who attacked the Parrot Island. His galaxy impact did a great damage to the island. We see some people were even knocked out because of it. What a legendary entry and show of power by Garp. He just showed that he's in a whole different level compared to the other Marines. Now that we're in the final saga of One Piece, it's time for all the characters who haven't revealed their powers yet like Shanks, Dragon, Garp, etc. to show their true strength. In his prime, Garp was stronger than anyone in the Marines, and what he says in this chapter after his attack just proves it. Then after it, we see some people that came with him happy to see that Kobe is freed, but some of them was kinda jealous that Garp said Kobe is the future of the Marines and his favorite student while attacking the island. But of course, they are happy to see him again. Out of nowhere, we see Hibari frozen behind Kobe, and there comes Aokiji. Who else but him to do that? Garp vs Aokiji, we couldn't dream of a better fight. He then said that it'd be a shame if Kobe ends up escaping while Teach is away. Which shows how invested he is to this pirate crew and his new role. And that's where we were given the flashback of how they actually met. It's important to note that Aokiji cannot be part of the swords because of the flashback. He was found desperate and sitting alone in an island and plus he attacked the sword member. All this shows how he can't be one of them. Aokiji is not to be underrated though. He is capable of defeating Garp because the Admirals were proven to be the strongest force in the Marines pre time skip. Plus he has this ability that could one shot any top tier especially if he surprises you just like we've seen in his fight in Marine Ford against Jozu. So it's really important to take into account both sides of the matchup. Yes, Garp is strong, however Aokiji is as strong if not even stronger than him. This fight is really complex, his side is weaker than Blackbeard's in the Pirate Island. No one apart of him can do something great against characters like Shiryu or Aokiji. So if the fight is really intense, to the extent of Garp having to really die or be captured, he really gotta do something heroic. Garp is the hero of the marines, Roger's rival, and most importantly, Luffy's grandpa. He is an important character that cannot just go down like that without doing something. He could for example let the others escape and stay there alone fighting against pirates to make sure that happens. In the flashback, we see Aokiji freeze most of the pirates so quick and that's so cool. However, I really don't like scaling characters based off that because we've seen someone like Hancock do the same to Devon and Vasco shot. Even Blackbeard was saying that Hancock can petrify him. Does that prove that Hancock is stronger? No. So yes, the ability is cool but doesn't prove anything about Aokiji being on par with Blackbeard. I'm pointing this out because we've seen Blackbeard sweat in the chapter because of this broken side of Aokiji's devil fruit. However, right after, when he was explaining to Aokiji how pirates actually were, he was more relaxed and ready to fight. His personality could also explain his reaction. Someone like Shanks or Kaido would have a faster reaction. In the flashback, we've also seen him talk about his fight against Akainu and that's what even got him that depressed. He explained a little bit about how the fight went and showed his lost leg to the pirates. If you watched the film Z movie, you already know that Aokiji lost his leg. From just seeing Aokiji like this, you could think that the fight was one-sided, but lucky we knew about how long the fight lasted, which shows how equal they are in strength. Anyways, they also talked about the man marked by flames. Remember Kid went to Elbaf and I think he was trying to find that guy because he has one of the red poneglyphs which leads to the One Piece. 
First important info here is that that guy marked by flames has one of them. In my opinion, it's Jaguardi Soul and I'll go through the details of why I think it's that guy. He's in Elbaf, which is Shanks territory, and that means that it's his Poneglyph. The author is preparing the Shanks vs Blackbeard fight he's been teasing for so long, especially in Marineford where he showed us the different matchups we could have in the fight. Anyways, we see Aokiji showing his burn playing around with them, however, I think he met the guy once but still doesn't know who's being talked about here. They heard rumors that this guy marked by flames uses a black ship. Any ship that comes near him ends up being swallowed by giant whirlpools. Right after this, Shiryu brings up an important point, which is that the world government should have normally kept one or two of the poneglyphs because they're preventing any pirate from getting the one piece. However, this information might not be valid as we all know where the red poneglyphs are now. One is at Zoo, another at Hokek Island, and the recent one we've seen was at Wano underground. The fourth one was at Fishman Island under Whitebeard's protection, but we didn't see it when the Straw Hats went there a couple months ago, which means that it was certainly moved by someone in between. Therefore, since in the chapter we heard Lafitte mention that the guy marked by flames had one, and all the OG Yonkos once had one, it only makes sense that the last one is in Elbaf, under Shanks' protection, who also wants the One Piece like he said in chapter 1054. Anyways, this chapter is deeper than it looked, so I had to go into details and explain everything surrounding it. Now let's go into the next part of the chapter where Aokiji and Garp was facing off. Seeing Aokiji playing mind games with Garp, asking him which side he's on, the old or the new student trying to disturb him, and everything we've went through in this video, this chapter is a 10 out of 10. It was really really amazing. So Aokiji attacked Garp with the ice ball attack keeping him inside of it, however Garp gets out of it easily and counters him with the blue hole attack. Here we can notice the black reddish lightnings which confirms that Garp has conqueror's coding. Garp is really a monster man, especially at his prime because he uses his bare hands to fight, code it all with conquerors and armor and hockey to fight top pirates. But anyways, I can't really wait to see the outcome of this whole thing. Now let's attack the last part of the chapter. All this cooking these days is crazy. We got the result of the fight between the Hearts Pirates and the Blackbeards, which ended up in Law's obvious defeat. Okay, Blackbeard really struggled against someone like Law who isn't even a Yonko level character and is equal to someone like Kid who got one shouted by Shanks. This is my problem with this villain. I love him, his character, his mindset and everything but he can't in my opinion be the final villain. He's failing everything he's trying to do these days just like I said in my recent chapter review. He went to Amazon Lily to get Boa's fruit and failed because he saw Rayleigh and the guy even admitted that he was weaker than him especially with his age. Then he captured Kobe himself who helped him in the rookie port incident which played a huge role into making him a Yonko and failed again because he cannot use him to negotiate with the world government. And he now failed again because he got nothing from this fight and the captain of the defeated crew, Law, ended up escaping from him. And that's too many L's he's taken if you ask me. I don't know how his fight against Shanks or Luffy is gonna go or when he's gonna be in the show, however I strongly believe that Rox is coming back as a final villain. Trust me, the Rox hype is real. And check out my theory that I dropped this week explaining his comeback. His comeback will only do good for the show and I believe the author will go that way especially with everyone thinking the obvious way that Blackbeard will be Luffy's greatest obstacle. Anyways, that was just to tell you a little bit about Blackbeard's future. Before Beppo escaped with Law and it's really important to note that he became a Sulong not because of the moon but something Chopper made him. Blackbeard was asking himself what he would do with the devil fruit and even brought up the immortality part of it. And of course Blackbeard knows about it because he read the Devil Fruits book which has all the Devil Fruits and how they all actually work. But I think Blackbeard isn't going to have immortality anymore because it was under his nose and let it get away just like that. Anyways that is the end of my review. I really hope you liked it. All is revealing to us the mysteries one by one as we are near the end so stay focused because every chapter will be a banger. And of course expect a review on my side on every single one of them. Anyways I really hope you enjoyed it and if so subscribe to my channel and join the crew. Sayonara, see you in the next chapter review.